This is Mortgage Lending Mastery. Get the knowledge you need from America's Mortgage Mentor. With more than 35 years of experience and over $1 billion in lifetime fundings, you'll learn to advance your mortgage practice quickly and efficiently. Also, be sure to check out Jen's book, Launch, How to Take Your Business to New Heights. Available on Amazon. For a signed copy, contact Jen at jenduplessis.com. Now, here is Certified Mortgage Planner and CEO of Kinetic Spark Consulting, Jen Duplessis. Hey everyone and welcome back. I hope you're having a great day. I am so excited today to have Jeff Tesh with us. He is the CEO of RCN Capital and it's a company that I've actually had some affiliation with over the last several years, you know, as I've moved from company to company and then subsequently, you know, um, moved out of lending altogether as an originator. I'm no longer doing that, of course. And um, I'm really excited to have him here with us. So let me tell you a little bit about Jeff. Again, he's the CEO of RCN Capital. Um, uh, and, you know, the company, I'm going to just, I'm looking at your, your uh, bio here and, you know, I just want to say some things about the company. <laughs> um, RCN uh, does small uh, commercial loans anywhere from 50000 to $2.5 million dollars. Um, to purchase to fund the purchase and rehab of non owner occupied residential and commercial properties provide bridge loans and issue real estate backed lines of credit now let me tell you what that really means for those of us that are listening in these are non owner occupied only no owner occupied whatsoever and therefore is not subject to all of the crazy mess that we're all involved in with QM and not well non QM loans. So there's a lot of flexibility in these types of loans. So if your niche is in investing investors, which is what my niche was in and how I originally found our RCN um, years and years and years ago in Vegas. Right. And, yep. um, you know, if that's your niche and you're cat, you know, you're tapped out at DTI or property or, uh, you know, number of properties financed or assets available, you know, for every property that's financed or credit issues or any of that, this is the place to go. This is where you need to be um, maneuvering. So this is a great niche to be in. It's a huge market across the United States. And you're going to tell us about that too, Jeff, um, about how, how we aren't, bound to our you know our, our own city or our own uh, licensing so um i want to say thank you so much for taking time to join us and welcome to our show oh jen thank you so much it's a pleasure to be here um thank you for all the kind words you know we do go back quite a ways um uh, it's been great to see the evolution of your career and some of the the different educational things that you've been doing today are just tremendous jen Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's just jump right in and talk about who this is for and who this is not for as it relates to the mortgage lender. And then we'll go into the same question for the consumer. Sure, absolutely. So, you know, just a high level view on our company. You know, we started our company back in 2010 uh, as a private uh, family office that was going to deploy capital into the non-owner occupied residential space. Now, what does that mean? That means folks who were buying distressed assets, which there was a tremendous amount, as we all know, coming out of the, uh, the Great Recession, um, there was an amazing opportunity for investors to buy properties all across the United States, rehab them, and put them back into the marketplace for families to live in. So. Because this is a very specialized loan, we thought it would be a great time to start a company really focused on just that, which is a short-term, 12-month, interest-only bridge loan that gave investors the power to not only acquire the property, but also provide the capital they needed to take that property back up to livable standards and put it back into the marketplace. So. For the independent professionals out there, the mortgage folks, this was an opportunity for folks to begin originating product that was well outside the traditional residential guidelines that we are, we're all so accustomed to. 
Um, and, and that's kind of how we got started uh, uh, in, in really very just, you know, organic fashion. Yeah. And, you know, I love getting the emails from you guys about, you know, sharing what the, what the financing is that you've done, you know, over the last month or so. I love looking at those because it opens up so many opportunities, you know, um, just to help, just to help more and more families and, and especially investors, you know, create more wealth for themselves. Um, so mortgage professionals, let's talk about that. This is specifically for mortgage brokerage firms and the employees that work there, correct? Yeah, absolutely. You know, um, many folks have seen me all across the country. Jen, our, our paths cross all the time yeah. at the various mortgage origination conferences mm -hmm. from coast to coast. And, and once again, I'll take, I'll take us all back to kind of how we thought about building the company. And when we were building out the company, you know, starting back in 2010, we had a choice and that choice was, are we gonna hire loan officers and deposit them all across the country? Or were we gonna empower the independent brokers that were already in place in every community across the United States? And as you can probably guess, we chose the latter, which was to really build our lending programs so that independent originators could easily sell these products to their customers and be compensated quite handsomely for them uh, for doing it. Yeah, so, so when we talk about, um, so just so that we're really clear on this, um, if you work for a bank or you work for an independent mortgage banker uh, or mortgage lender, uh, this is a product that you'd have to go to your, your lender and figure out whether or not you know, they'd wanna participate in this or not, um, or you could call Jeff and find out ways that perhaps you could participate as an independent. But generally, this is for mortgage brokers and, and their employees only. So I just wanna make sure we get that clear. Um, yeah. It's a great opportunity if you can make this happen. It's a wonderful opportunity. So when we talk about um, actually offering the, this kind of a product, you know, as residential loan officers, and I know that this is something that you've had to, you know, really, really train a lot of people on because the mindset of a residential loan officer kind of reminds me of the old days, because I've been in the business forever, right? The old days way back in the 80s when realtors said no to VA loans because they didn't understand them, right? Or someone said right. no to a NAGAM loan because they didn't understand it. Even today, perhaps someone saying to an adjustable rate because they don't understand it. So um, to, to kind of put those walls down for anyone who's listening here is um, what are you finding is the best way for loan officers to transition and bring this, this product up? Is it a last resort bring up or is it something where someone has to make a conscious decision to market this so that they can increase their business or is it a combination of both? Oh, exactly, Jen. No, the, the latter is 100% correct, which is we find independent mortgage brokers all across the country are very busy today with the low interest rates on acquisition, but especially on the refis, mm -hmm. especially over the last six months as rates have really come down to numbers that we haven't seen in 30 or 40 years. Everybody really got very busy and had very full pipelines. Mm -hmm. However, as 2020 comes along, mm -hmm. it's extremely important that folks think about adding other products to their mix to help diversify what they are selling in their communities. So what I like to talk about a lot when I'm going around touring the nation, educating the independent brokers is, there is no reason for your company and you as an individual loan officer to ever say no to a non-owner of occupied commercial loan. Right. And the reason that is, is it is super easy to get signed up with a company such as RCN Capital, understand our product mix, get the introductions here internally. And then when those opportunities come along, you will immediately have the ability to be able to get those deals funded. So to really answer your question directly, Jen, the time is now 
to add this product to your mix, whether or not you choose to market it, that's really a business decision on your part. We have full uh, white label capabilities to be able to meet up with the local loan officers, give them all the materials they need to market it, but that's not really needed out of the gate. What is needed is the initial education, getting you or your company signed up so that when these opportunities come along in your local communities, you can take advantage of them. Yeah, I think that's really key. I, you know, I've, I've been talking about short-term gain for long-term pain lately. <laughs> uh, absolutely. A year ago, just a year ago, we were in long-term gain, you know, long-term pain because everyone was saying, you know, I'm not funding anything. I don't have any business. I don't know what to do. And, and of course, I've run across people that have said, you know, I'm having my best year ever. And I'm happy for them and I'm pleased, but it's temporary. You know, it's only because the market's Absolutely. in our favor. And so these are these are great fundamentals and foundational uh, products and services that you can offer that differentiate you and separate you in the marketplace. And that's one of the things that we, you know, are constantly talking about. And no one takes it up. You know, there, I shouldn't say no one. There's only a handful of people that take advantage of making themselves different and shining a light on what their capabilities are. So I love that you said that. And, you know, I think that, um, and, and it's a class that I've given too is, uh, and I can't even think of the name of it, but it was all about investors. And I, I literally went from the, the wannabe investor who's never had a, a, an investment property and how the mindset has to change it because it's not the emotional connection. It's all about the numbers all the way to, you and other companies that do this service, uh, you know, in what I would call a kind of a world that most loan officers don't even know exist. I mean, it's crazy. They don't. They don't even know that this exists. And, you know, I play in that market because I, I do a lot of, um, I was going to say swaps, but I don't do swaps. I do a lot of wraps, um, you know, and subject to, and that's how I buy my properties. So I was already in this market and, you know, it was, it was easy for me to make the transition, but I do agree that, you know, it's a mindset shift here for everybody. Um, so let me stay on this just for one second is, so why do you think 2020, um, is going to be instrumental other than, I mean, we know that interest rates are probably going to drop just a little bit more, so it's still going to continue. But why do you think this is the time? Uh, to be introducing this type of product when you think about 2020 and beyond? Yeah. So what I've found, in and this goes for any business career that you're in, whether it be mortgages, real estate, uh, or, or selling sandwiches on Main Street somewhere, right? It is much easier to diversify your product offering when times are good. Mm -hmm. When times are good, your bank account is flush with cash, you're thinking about how, how much longer this is gonna last and, and just really enjoying the good times, right? right? You're not worried about how am I gonna pay my staff? How, you know, do I have to make layoffs? These are all horrible decisions that are made when you're wondering where the next wave of volume is gonna come from. Yeah. So what I, I often say, you know, in, in my various contacts with brokers across the country is please, Take advantage of the good times to think about how you're going to set yourself up for success when this refi boom ends. Okay. Listen, I believe the purchase market is going to stay strong in 2020 and beyond. There's generally not enough single family houses in the United States okay. in most MSAs for the demand that is there. But the reality is, the refi boom is really what's powering a lot of these over the top earnings with independent professionals. So now is the time to think about non-owner occupied origination and adding it to your product mix. I'll give you a quick stat. So in a third quarter of 2019, all the single family one to four transactions almost 18%, was just under 18% of all the transactions in the United States were for some sort of commercial purpose. And what I mean by that is it could be the short-term short -term fix and flip, you know, meaning the 12 month buy, renovate and sell, but also an area that's growing in tremendous 
I, I just can't even believe how quick it's growing, is folks beginning to aggregate single family one to four homes for long-term rental income. Mm -hmm. uh, as a matter of fact, here at RCN, last month, the month of October, 35% of all our originations were for long-term single family non-owner occupied rental debt. Uh, so the market is really, I'm going to use the word exploding. It is. Um, and now is the time for the local originators around the country to add these products to your mix and really take advantage of it. I mean, if you think about it, Jen, right? 18%. That's almost one fifth of all the transactions in the United States. Yeah. If you're not originating yeah. non-owner occupied commercial, you are just throwing these away. And uh, the, time, the time for that to end is now. Now is the time to be thinking about how I can begin really uh, capitalizing on that growing marketplace. Yeah, I love that. Um, so, you know, speaking of stats, let's talk about a little bit more about stats as it relates to that is why is it that you're getting so much of this business? What is, you know, we talk about 35% of your business came, you know, came in as long term. The average loan officer is saying, well, if it's one to four, why aren't they just getting a regular loan? So what are some of the stats as to why people are coming into this market space? If rates are that low, for goodness sake, <laughs> right? Uh, why, yeah. why are the stats uh, like this for the buy and holds? Yeah. So it's interesting, right? As the capital... Uh, non-owner occupied capital marketplaces evolved. And what I mean by non-owner occupied capital marketplace is when we started our company back in 2010, I mentioned family office. Basically what family office means is we put together our own cash, significant amounts of equity, and began lending it out as our own money. There was no leverage. But as uh, interest rates have slowly declined since the crash, there, the capital marketplace has found commercial non-owner occupied lending to be a very attractive place to begin deploying significant and significant amounts of cash. Right. So and what we've lost. done, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what we've done at RCN is we've used our, you know, extremely solid cash position, being a family office, and began partnering with capital partners out of New York, mostly hedge funds, mm -hmm. to drive down our cost of capital, especially on the 30-year non-owner occupied long-term rental, to the point where we are competitive with local lenders. Um, and I never like to talk about rates and points as the, the yeah. point of why you need to do something, but the fact is we're putting out capital today anywhere between 4.75 and 5.25, locking those rates in for 30 years, no five-year arms or anything like that. You're like, you're locking in at these crazy low rates, which 4.75 on a 30-year fixed for rental is just tremendous. Right. Um, and, and, and the reality is- it's pull me through the, the coals for underwriting. Bingo. That's exactly right. So, you know, really to answer your question, why do people, why wouldn't they go to a local community bank for the 30 year? There's a couple reasons. One is our ease of underwriting. Yeah. So there's no personal debt to income mm -hmm. for the long-term rental, meaning yeah. I don't really care how much you made or lost last year on your 1040, mainly because we don't collect it. Yeah. What we are concerned with is your credit history, are you paying your bills on time and how well is going is that in the, how well is that single family home going to cash flow once you get a renter in there that's what we're concerned about and it just makes the process so much easier than going to a traditional bank yeah I love it. Thank you so much for sharing that. So let's talk about, um, so that, that really addresses the consumer, you know, the primary focus on the consumer. And I want to just talk about that just a, a little bit more in that um, you, you're doing buy and holds, right? And for those that don't understand what that means, they're just 
buying investment property and holding it for however period of time that they want to hold the property, you know, to grow well, to pay off the debt, to have equity, to have cash flow, um, to leave it for their family members, whatever their case may be. Yeah. Um, then there's also the, the <clears throat> fix and flip or rehab, renovation, that type of thing. So think about it. If you're in that space of renovation loans with Fannie or with FHA, um, this is a great opportunity to, for you to just piggyback on something you're already familiar with. And that's doing the same type of thing, but on the investor side with the fix and, the fix and flips. So um, what else are you doing besides that? I mean, you mentioned something about bridge loans, but help us understand how we could do bridge loans with you as well. Um, and maybe an, an investor, or maybe on an owner occupied, I'm not real sure there. Right. So we are a non-owner occupied lender. Um, one of the reasons so many independent professionals love to add this product to their mix is it frees them from all of, and you mentioned it early on in our conversation, all of the things that we've been implemented, Dodd-Frank and TRID, all the rest of it. It simply does not apply to commercial lending. And it's not because the government thinks what we do isn't important, but the way it's looked at is it's one business entity dealing with another business and ent entity. Yeah. It is two businesses acquiring debt for a business purpose. Mm -hmm. So for us, that is really what differentiates us from the traditional re residential mortgage place. But to answer your question on um, how we add different products, the fix and flip is the bread and butter still is the majority of what we do today. The long-term rental is growing in popularity. And wherever, wherever you're listening from today, I don't care if it's from Sacramento, California, Key West, Florida, Spokane, Washington, wherever you are, there are investors aggregating single family homes. But to add another layer to this, which is what about, you know, just straight up bridge loans for investors. We have found that there's many investors that acquired properties during the crash, shortly after the crash, and have really seen a tremendous bump in the equity that they have available in those homes. Some of the folks have paid their debt down to zero. Other folks have had their debt paid down to a very minimal uh, portion in comparison to how much equity is available in the property. So what we do is we do add, uh, offer bridge loans to folks who are already own properties and are looking to take cash out of those properties and move them into another transaction. Could be buying more properties, could be investing in a family business. If that opportunity comes along where investors own properties today, they're looking to take some equity out and move on to another opportunity. A straight up bridge loan is certainly an opportunity that, that we've been able to capitalize on uh, how, how in a growing you, area. Yeah, how long are you, how long is the bridge loan? Yeah, so typically the bridge loan is once again going to be a short 12 to 24 month loan. Mm -hmm. Basically what it's doing is providing cash to someone to take advantage of that opportunity that they see today. Yeah. Could be rehabbing another property. If they, basically if they're cash poor but equity rich, yeah. It gives them the ability to be able to capitalize on that next opportunity without having cash in the bank. Right. And without having to eliminate that particular property. And of course, it, you know, when it comes around for due time, right, it's either they'll sell that property and, you know, take whatever cash out or they will ha they would have already fixed and flipped another property and paid that off. So, OK. So, um, you know, I love that. Now, as we talk about commercial and not to get too technical in this because commercial is a whole different thing. I used to do a lot of B&Bs um, years mm -hmm. ago, <laughs> a lot yeah. of bed breakfast. And, uh, and, uh, but right now, you know, what are you seeing in the commercial space that you guys are doing? Are you seeing small little anchored malls? Are you seeing seven to nine unit multifamily? What are you seeing mostly in what your definition of commercial is right now? Sure. So, I can only speak to what we're lending on, which is we are aggressively lending on multifamily repositioning loans. Yeah. Um, once again, all across the country, 
there is so many small apartment buildings, small to mid-sized apartment buildings, that were built in the 60s, 70s, and 80s. Many of these are the existing owners, and they have a tremendous amount of units that haven't been rehabbed, have gone vacant. They could be less, you know, retiring, cashing out of the property. Right. So what we're what we're dealing with was investors coming to us saying, "Hey, I've got this 20-unit apartment building somewhere in the suburb or downtown of any city in America. I want to buy it. I want to convert those units." that are dated to today's standards. So once again, I need an acquisition loan. Yeah. I need bridge lending to rehab those units. And then I will take this loan out long-term. So what you're really looking for there is a 24 month multifamily bridge loan that looks very much like the single family one to four fix and flip loan where we're giving uh, acquisition dollars as well as those rehab dollars to be able to bring those units up to standard. Yeah. We're seeing a lot of that, Jen. Yeah. So now, you know, in a traditional commercial loan from a local bank, um, there's going to be a review of everybody's documentation, their credit, their P&L, their balance sheet, a whole renew, usually in that three to five year span. So what are you guys doing on those types? Are you following suit with that and reintroducing and making sure it's still on track? Or are you just letting that loan kind of sit there for the 30 years or whatever term you've, you've gotten? Right. So really dividing it up into the two areas. One, which is the, you know, the short-term fixed flip, which we'll call bridge lending, and then the long-term 30-year rental. Mm -hmm. So on the, on the fix and flip, we are super involved with these properties. We service all of these loans in-house. We don't sell off the servicing to another lender uh, on the short-term bridge. So basically what it means is if you buy a property in your community, I'm going to buy it for $1,000, I'm going to put $50,000 into it, and I think I'm going to be able to sell it for two hundred and fifty. dollars We fund that loan, and then immediately you go to work fixing that property. Right. And what you're going to do is we fund 100% of the draws. Mm -hmm. So what you'll do is as each segment that you determine – is a good time for you to request more money because we're only charging interest on monies that are dispersed. We're not showing, we're not charging full boat at closing. So you can control the amount of money that you need. Right. You will reach out to our servicing department and say, Hey, you know, I've fit, finished the kitchen. Can you please send out an inspector to inspect this property? I'm going to need a draw for whatever, $10,000. We send out the money. We send out our inspector, they review and then they we will immediately wire that money within 72 hours to your account. So you control the process of that fix and flip. Now switching gears to the 30 year, 30 year is a straight up rental loan where there is no rehab going on. Right. So all we're concerned with is that that property is tenanted up at closing and then once that lease is in place, we securitize these loans and they get bundled into the secondary market and then long-term servicing will take over on those properties. Right. But to be clear, there's no looking at everything three to five years, every three to five years. And I think people need to understand that that's what happens with traditional commercial loans is that the bank is wanting to refresh and re relook at everything every three to five years because they have these calls on them. They don't have the long, even though they call it a long term, they have these three to five year reviews. So I think that's a huge benefit as well. I want to switch gears real quickly as we kind of finish up um, our time today. And that is that if a loan officer is listening to this and, you know, one, they're going to have to go to their, their broker manager and, and get signed up and all of that. Or if they work for a bank, they can give you a call and find out what they can do. But um, I want to know what would be the next step for someone to introduce this to their realtor base. Because I know that when I introduced it to my realtor base, one of the challenges I had is that 
realtors come around and they're, they're like, I'm a realtor, I'm a realtor, I'm a real estate agent. And then I go, how come you're not doing real estate on every kind of real estate? Why are you only, you know, doing residential? Yeah. If, you, if you could do more, wouldn't you want to do more, want to have more opportunities? And it was a little bit of a challenge because just like loan officers, residential loan officers, we have this mindset of QM, right? And we're like, oh, it's got to fit by the rules. And so all of this is a little new to some people. They're saying, wow, this is even out there. So how would a loan officer or what are you guiding your loan officers or having your staff do to guide loan officers to be introducing this to make that mark in the business um, to the real estate agents that they're working with now as a means to help their business grow? Right. And, you know, realtors are a great point. Um, We were actually out in San Francisco this year at the National Association of Realtors Annual Convention, which was just a couple of weeks ago. Um, And what we do with the realtors is we try to, you hit the nail on the head, Jen, which is we try to educate the realtors as to saying, why would you limit yourself to owner occupied? You should be seeking out investors in your community and saying, hey, I have a pipeline of deals that get listed with me and my company. I want you to be able to work with me to find that end buyer that that will absolutely take this distressed asset and or rental and put it into the community. You know, what we often tell the realtors and, and for that matter, mortgage brokers in general is, If you just sat down at your computer at home and Google in your community investment clubs, Mm -hmm. there are so many investment clubs in every corner of our country. And if the realtor or mortgage professional engages with these uh, local mortgage origination investment clubs, you will be amazed at what you will find is going on in your community today. One of the largest is known as RIA, yeah. Real Estate Investment Association. You just Google that. There's chapters all over the country. Yeah. They have a national cruise, too. I've been on it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they that take, sounds they like take fun. all the RIA, national RIA, yeah, on a big cruise. And everyone, has, they have lots of speakers and lots of deals are getting done and money's flowing back and forth. It's really exciting. Yeah, no, RIA is definitely one of the best ones around. Um, you know, I would just caution everybody, it's a lot of investor wannabes. And so you have to pull the wool, I mean, the pull the wool over. I didn't want to say that. <laughs> grab, the, grab the bull by the horns and be the leader in the relationship with uh, the investors as consumers as well as anyone else who's in there trying to get, you know, get business. I will tell you this, very, very, very rarely do you see another loan officer in there. It's not lenders. hundred percent. And and I never see realtors in there, you know, and if I do, they're, they don't even usually own their own home, let alone investor (laughs) property. Um, Yeah. Yeah. So I think that's a great way. Um, What other tips might you have in just, you know, if we wanted to talk to the realtors that we already have in our database and say, you know, in, in, you know, we're, you and I are talking, this won't be released till after the new year, but you and I are talking here at the end of November. And, you know, this is a great time of the year to be talking about what my plan looks like next year. And, And I know I've been guiding all of my coaching clients to be sitting down with their partners and saying what, you know, what's your goal next year? How can I help you get there? Here are my goals. How can you help me get there? So how would I be introducing this to my residential real estate agent who I have a really good relationship with? Because I just feel like a lot of loan officers are so afraid. They live in that scarcity mode. They're so afraid to muddy up any waters and introduce something new to their realtors that maybe they'll go, you know, elsewhere, which is just a bunch of cockamamie, right? Because I've, I've done it myself. I've introduced my realtors to this. And, um, but what, what suggestions do you have to broach that conversation and introduce them. Right, absolutely. So, especially for the mortgage professionals that are going to reach out to their realtor contacts, first thing you want to do is get educated on the product mix with your private lender. Now, obviously, in RCN Capital, we take that very seriously. Our marketing department goes above and beyond to be able to provide you really easy to use white label documents that you will be able to share with your realtor partners so that they begin to understand just how easy it is to market to investors. And that's really what we're talking about here today, Jen, which is every level of the food chain 
marketing to investors, which is a completely underserved marketplace when it comes to independent brokers and especially realtors. Realtors are so focused on the lunch and learns with local folks. Let's try a completely different tact, which is how about lunch and learns for investors? Yeah. Loca, reach out to your local business groups and they're everywhere with lions clubs. Finance I mean, the list goes too, you know, cause they have the, the finance planners, yeah. um, all of the usual folks that people need to do business. If the mortgage brokers educate using the simple white label documents that we provide, you will find that the, the little light bulbs go off in everybody's head. Oh, I heard about a deal recently and I told them we didn't do that. Yeah. Once again, yeah. that yeah. needs that needs to end today. Yeah, I I remember that too. I remember bringing this up and saying, "Oh my gosh, I had this guy and I, you know, and oh, I'm already working with an investor. He doesn't even look at properties. He just whenever I get a pocket listing or a regular listing, I just send it over to him and then he runs the numbers and we we close on them. And these are deals we never see because the guys paying cash or getting money from you already. <laughs> right? Bingo. Mother source. So, we, you know, there are deals we don't see. I have one other quick question I want to ask you because you mentioned listing agents. You know, one of the things that I really focus on with my, my high level coaching clients is, um, is working with listing agents. And it's so funny because most loan officers, I think they go, I think realtors go to school and they're told, they're told to say three things. Say, I already have a lender. I have an in-house lender and I'm a listing agent and the loan officer should, should put their tail between their legs and run away. Right. And I like to be a disruptor. So I say, Oh my gosh, you're a listing agent. Awesome. I've been looking for one. Catch them off guard. Right. So I developed a lot of things that I could put into working with a listing agent. To what capacity do you think this works for listing agents just as much as it does for the buying side of things? Because you've talked more about, you know, focusing on the owner occupied. But do you see that this could be, you know, a great way for them to get new listings or take on listings they normally wouldn't have um, because this opportunity is available and there's knowledge provided by the loan officer as they approach them in the relationship? Yeah, absolutely. And, and one of the things that we really talk about in our, our presentations around the country is you want to become, meaning that the, the local mortgage professional wants to become the go-to expert in a specific area, right? Good question. Yeah, so that's if a you, thing. Yeah. <laughs> if you, right, if you can become the expert in non-owner-occupied commercial lending, whether if you're in a small branch, a big branch, whatever your community is, if you're the go-to person for that knowledge, you know what? Little things like, hey, reach out to your local paper, that yeah. only serves your town and offer to write an article on an investment that you saw happen and maybe you participated in. All of a sudden, you're the local expert in this particular segment of the mortgage place. Now you're going to be the ones, oh, well, I heard Mary over here at so-and-so mortgage shop is the go-to for this product. or. Joe over at this realtor is the go-to to list my investment property when I want to sell it. If you make yourself the expert, business will follow. Yeah, love it, love it. Well, it's always been that way, right? You make yourself, I do the, I do, I don't need more, but <laughs> I used to do the best customized 30 or fixed rate loan in the marketplace. Think about that. Most loan yeah. officers don't think you can customize a 30 year fixed rate. <laughs> and so I would just change the words. And, and of course, we're customizing them all the time. But I want to do it better than anybody else. You know, I want to be the best at doing a 30, a customized 30 year fixed rate loan than anybody else. And of course, mine was always investor anyway, because I had my own need, you know, my own need yeah. to put it together. Absolutely. Um, Jeff, it's been fantastic talking to you today. Well, tell us a little bit about um, you. I just want to hear something about you in that um, what is, you know, one of your personal goals for 2020 and what book are you reading right now that's having an impact in your personal or professional life? Yeah. So, you know, it's interesting. We're just getting ready to set our goals for 2020 uh, for the company. We just sat down last week with our manager roundtable, 
And that, that was the topic, which is each department of our company, whether it be finance or marketing or technology, what is each department going to do to move that ball forward for the company? And one of the things that we've always tried to do here at RCN is taking the, the absolute granular customer experience and trying to make it so unbelievable that those customers will never want to leave. Yeah. And what I, what I really mean by that is when you're selling money, everybody's rates are kind of the same. Right. You know, you might be a little better here, a little worse here. But if that customer experience, and when I use the word customer, I'm not just talking about end user. I'm talking about mortgage professional yeah. partner. I'm yeah. talking about referral agent. Mm -hmm. All the way down the food chain, if you can make that experience unbelievable, the company will absolutely grow. And that's really what we're working on for 2020. We've done a great job with it uh, the past couple years and our reputation, uh, we like to think, uh, has really propelled us to the great growth what we're seeing. But it's always about what's next in that customer experience. And that's where, where we're working on today. As far as um, what book I'm reading, so um, I recently had the pleasure of seeing Gary V, uh, mm -hmm. Gary Vanderchuk at AIM. And, you know, I had seen him on LinkedIn and how powerful he is with some of his ideas yeah. on empathy and growing a business. So I recently picked up his latest book and I'm just getting into it. The thing I love about it is it's straightforward, no nonsense. Yeah. I'm what, what really is looking at his most recent book so we can get that a link here. Yeah, so his most re recent book, and I can't remember the title, it was just released last year. But what I'm finding out about it, Jen, is that he really goes into some of the granular ideas of just how important it is on customer engagement yeah. and, and how empathy can really power not only your own organic business, but that customer relationship and bring it to the next level. Yeah, I love that. And, and I think it even goes beyond engagement nowadays. It's involvement as well. It's not just what we do, yeah. looking at them and engaging them, but it's their involvement in our success. You know, their, their involvement in all the things that we do in our practice. So I love that. Thank you so much. I, again, just want to yep. say thank you so much for joining today. And um, if you're watching on YouTube, you can see Jeff's um, email address here. But for those of yep. you that aren't, I, we will have the email address um, in the show notes, LinkedIn, as well as all of the um, websites and things like that. So, you, I mean, it's super easy. It's rcncapital.com, but you'll be able to go there as well if you want to reach out to um, his company. And, you know, you probably won't get the CEO, and that's okay, but we <laughs> heard it from him. And uh, yeah. listen, their whole team is incredible. They all know what they're doing. So, you know, reach out to them and see if this is an opportunity that could stretch your business, you know, next year and beyond. So again, thank you, Jeff, for being here. My pleasure, Jen. Thanks so much. So good to see you. You too. You too. So everybody, again, thank you so much for listening to Mortgage Lending Mastery. And I forgot to say at the beginning, if it's your first time, welcome to our community. Make sure you subscribe and make sure that you get all of the updates. And Boy, as we get further and further along here, you know, we're coming up on our fifth year doing this podcast, one of the longest running, actually the longest running podcast for mortgage lenders. And um, I just say continue to pay it forward and um, go back and listen to all the beginning again. You never know. There might be something yeah. that's said in the beginning or in the interview that didn't resonate with you the first time through, but boy, you're ready for it today. So I thank you again for listening and go out and make it a fantastic day. Thank you for listening to Mortgage Lending Mastery. Looking to streamline and launch your practice by accessing Jen's tools, courses, classes, presentations, and resources? Visit jenduplessis.com to learn about the features and benefits thousands of other professionals have experienced by enrolling in Jen's lifetime membership program. Isn't it about time you consider a coach to take your business to new heights? Contact Jen to start your application process today. Thanks again, and be sure to tune in next week.